we have understood the Cobb Douglas production function and the producer's equilibrium many times but in this video we will do this in 3D environment because it is better to understand three variables altogether not in two dimensional diagram which is usually plotted on a page rather in a 3D space so for such innovative ideas and better ways of learning I recommend that you subscribe to this channel so that you continuously receive innovative ways of quantitative and diagrammatical nature and also the research tools. So now we focus on this certain production function that is the Cobb Douglas production function and we are going to go towards its producers equilibrium in 3D. Right now in the first stage we remember from our previous experience that we estimated the Cobb Douglas production function by using the generalized least square estimation method because that was statistically speaking suitable in the given situation. And we had a number of banks, uh, the output, the input and the other input. So we are going to plot this Cobb Douglas production function that we estimated in a 3D space. Let us see how. So you can see that this is the plotting of that production function that we estimated. Here you can see x-axis, here you can see y-axis and here you can see z-axis. So it's a three-dimensional diagram. On vertical axis you can see various values of z and on this axis you can see various values of x and here you can see the various values of y. So it, it seems like a surface and it is because it's a 3D diagram and in 3D diagram we have a surface we do not have a line or any 2D diagram. So now we will uh, visualize it in, uh, in a better way by rotating this diagram in a clockwise fashion. So now you see that it is being rotated in a clockwise fashion and it is allowing us to better understand that how it is constructed. So you see it's a kind of paper or a sheet that we have bent a little bit and this is the plotting of that certain diagram. This is the back side and this is how it will look like just like a sheet that is bent. This is the side pose and now we are looking at the front side of the production function and now again yet another side pose of the production function. So this is how it looks like in, in 3D diagram. These uh, This surface has quite a bit of points on it and all of these points are showing various combinations of labor and capital that will give rise to various uh, levels of output. For example if I stop it here uh, if I choose this point, this point is uh, this much as compared to y and it this point is this much as compared to x and this point in terms of height is this. So uh, we can consider a point and we can consider uh, its uh, x coordinate, y coordinate and z coordinate. If I am to reach this point I have to travel this much of x and that much of y and in terms of vertical dimension I have to travel this much and I can get to that place. So labor and capital they can be combined and they can give us a certain output. This is how it looks like. Now we can uh, come towards the indifference curves of the same production function. So you can see that these three isoquants we have to plot. This is the first one, this is the second one and this is the third one. We consider that uh, on the first isoquant the output is one unit and on the second one it is two unit and three unit. So in this way we can extend this to any number of isoquants so it will become a isoquant map and now we can see this on the uh, three dimensional graph. So now we are going to plot those three isoquants on this graph. Now we have plotted those three and isoquants and you can see that there are three 
surfaces the, which are added to this uh, certain graph and the surfaces are starting from here they have a fixed value here no matter how where we go for vertical dimension they remain the same so uh, because the iso quant is equal to a constant and uh, it's in a multiplicative form the two factors of production that is x and y they were being multiplied and due to that we have this sort of curve now let us uh, allow some uh, movement and now we will be able to see this clearly uh, there is another set of uh, curves here but that is in the negative dimension which we do not want so we will omit this set of curves however this uh, set of curves will be acceptable so we see that these three curves are actually slicing the production function production function is in a uh, little darker purple color whereas the isoquants they are in a lighter shade of purple and they are cutting the uh, production function surface uh, in three different places for example this one is by the first isoquant that one is for the second one and the third one will also cut it up here where the graph is not capturing the surface so let us uh, allow it to move further we can also move this in a, a, in a different dimension so that we could see the um, cutting from above so I'm going to use that option from which I could see it from above and see how it is slicing the production function and now it is coming towards that place from where I can have a look at it here is the production function and the indifference curves they are slicing it from above let us use the counterclockwise angle and you can see the production function is getting sliced off by these surfaces of uh, isoquants and those certain points that are the intersection of these curves will be basically the indifference curve those combinations where the output is the same for all the combinations of uh, labor and capital again this surface is not to be considered because this is in the um, negative dimension mathematically it is acceptable but economic sense is made by this surface another way of looking at it fr is from this the angle so this is the um, cutting from the other side you can see that these are the three isoquants and they are cutting this production function from these three places here it is they are cutting it so you see that uh, the production function and the isoquants they are cutting it giving rise to those isoquants now we have introduced the budget line this is the equation we are assuming that the prices of labor and capital they are equal to 1 here for the sake of ease we have used x instead of fa and y instead of sw because in the visualization x and y axis they need to be more visible so x is representing fa and y is representing sw so this is the visualization of the producers equilibrium where this uh, light uh, colored surface is basically representing the budget line and this uh, purple shaded surface is the production function this slice of it would be the isoquant where the output is fixed let us allow it a little bit of rotation and you can see that the budget constraint is slicing the production function at various points and this gives rise to that diagram that we see in the 2d on our pages but this is how it actually looks like and that point where the tangency happens at the highest point that will give us the equilibrium that is the producers equilibrium 
so in this way we can visualize and better understand the consumers uh, producers equilibrium by using the uh, production function which is the cobb douglas production function uh, thank you